Morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to this Ensley Insurance League Division One game. Sunderland against Millwall. It's a bright, crisp afternoon, and it's going to be a bright, crisp game between the two top sides in the Division One table. Millwall, who lead the Red and Whites of Sunderland by just two goals. And so if Sunderland do manage to pull back on that margin this afternoon in beating Millwall, then they'll go very convincingly top of the table with two games in hand as well. So a win this afternoon will put Sunderland three points clear, up aside from the new den. And of course, as I say, the Wearsiders have also got two games in hand. But of course, this afternoon, Sunderland have been hit by injuries and suspensions. There's no Paul Bracewell again, of course. He's still receiving treatment from his for his hernia, he's had his operation, he's all right, but we await his recuperation. David Kelly is out injured, having unluckily trod on a shoelace as he was leaving the field at the end of last week's successful game against Crystal Palace, and so that's unluckily ruled him out today. And of course, Kevin Ball starts the first of a three-match suspension this afternoon, so the persistent and aggressive Sunderland skipper isn't in action this afternoon, and uh, he'll be disappointed about that so we've got a few changes in the Sunderland side and we welcome back in fact Martin Gray who's been on a loan spell at Fulham and he takes his place in the following Sunderland side there's Alec Chamberlain in goal the back four Darius Kapitsky Andy Melville Richard Ord who captains the side today and Martin Scott and in midfield we've got Michael Gray Steve Agnew Martin Gray he's made two starts this season has Martin Gray against Norwich City and against Preston North End in the Coca-Cola Cup and Martin Smith and up front we've got Craig Russell and Phil Gray Phil on six goals of course came on a sub last week and the substitutes for Sunderland this afternoon John Mullin, Lee Howie and welcome back Gordon Armstrong for Millwall in goal they've got Casey Keller and he'll get an interesting mixed reception from the crowd this afternoon after his involvement with Don Goodman in that little skirmish down at the New Den last season and then they're back four, we've got Jerry Lavin, Keith Stevens, a captain who was sent off on Tuesday night when Millwall lost at home to Charlton. Uh, he was on 20 points already, and so to be sent off into the bargain simply compounded his uh, suspension for the near future. And then welcome back to Roka Park, Anton Rogan, popular player here, came here during the run to the cup final in 91-92 from Celtic, and moved on to join Dennis Smith down at Oxford United. There's Anton and uh, nice to see him here very accomplished central defender here came as a left back in fact but uh, really showed his true spurs in the center of the Sunderland defense moved on to Oxford United and then now at the new den and at uh, number three left back we've got Ben Thatcher very promising player indeed and uh, watched by a lot of the big clubs and then in midfield we've got uh, Morris Doyle, David Savage, Alex Ray and Jason Van Blerk, the Australian. Up front, Uwe Fuchs and Chris Malkin. And the substitutes for is Lee McRobert, Rick Newton and Scott Taylor. And the, the mascot for this afternoon, young Michael Carr, aged 10 years of age there, interested in cricket and football. He goes off the field. The referee, Mr Eddie Lomas from Lancashire, gets ready to get this game underway. The eyes of the country very much on this particular game this afternoon. Sunderland against Millwall battle really to put a lot of daylight between the leaders in the Ensley First Division and the rest of the pack. Darius Kibitsky playing his 90th game, flicks it forward. Steve Agnew, got a tenacity there, coming into his own since perhaps Paul Bracewell's been made idle because of his hernia problems, but Steve had a very convincing first half against Crystal Palace last week. But, uh, first blood in the free kick stakes to Palace. It's going to be Ben Thatcher who will eventually take this free kick. And uh, Sunderland defence should get it away. One of the meanest rear guards in the in the division. But uh, it's Millwall, no doubt under orders, showing first blood. Morris Doyle putting the ball across. Agnew to Martin Scott. Martin Scott and Ben Thatcher, two of the most promising left backs in the country against each other this afternoon. Uwe Fuchs, £700,000 from Kaiserslaut, and across to Thatcher. Andy Melville's there, having a very fine season indeed, Andy Melville. Peter Reid's restored a lot of his faith and confidence. Doyle, no danger there for Alec Chamberlain. Bright start, Millwall 
inevitably looking positive. Their recent record is far from good. They haven't won, in fact, since the 11th of November. They've only taken two points out of their last five games. They've lost their last two games at home. Won it against Watford last Saturday, courtesy of a horrific blunder by this man, Casey Kellop, United States goalkeeper. They lost that 2-1 to Glen Rhoda's side, and then they lost in midweek at home again to Charlton 2-0. Prior to that, they'd lost at Stoke 1-0. So uh, Mick McCarthy's side come to Roker Park on the back of a rather depressing record, whereas Sunderland, of course, looking for their fourth home league win on the trot. They've only lost one of the last 13 games. And so, inevitably, everybody here on Wearside full of confidence. Uwe Fuchs played such an important part in getting Middlesbrough into the Premiership last season, and perhaps uh, some people were rather surprised when Brian Robson didn't make his move to a Teesside permanent. Andy Melville now. Playing so well for Wales. Knocked nicely down by Uwe um, Craig Russell. Michael Gray, he's had a very good season indeed. Another player responding very much to the, uh, the freedom that Peter Reid has given him out on the wing. And referee Eddie Lomas going to have a word there with Alex Ray, the fiery Scotsman, once a Falkirk, been a leading scorer for Millwall in the last two seasons, and uh, wants to argue the toss with Mr Lomas, but he's not the sort of official that uh, players can treat lightly. And it's a useful-looking free kick to this for Sunderland, this one. Michael Gray played so well this season. And curl is one in, absolutely no wind at all this afternoon. Millwall back predictably in numbers. Craig Russell making a start, a welcome start this afternoon. He's been out this season, of course. And uh, he's managed to get a couple of goals to his credit so far this season. One man who would love to score again against Millwall, of course, is Martin Smith. He's only got one goal this season, but that was down at the New Den. And Michael Gray. Oh, my goodness me, nearly an opening first blood to Phil Gray there. Nice in-swinging corner there from Michael Gray and his namesake, Phil. He's uh, been at odds with the management. Times has run well here. Look, into the six-yard area, gets it well and perhaps might have just got over it and nodded it down. As it was, topped it and it went just over the bar. Phil Gray nearly added to his tally of six goals this season. And Alec Chamberlain, who's only conceded 15, in fact, in the league, had an outstanding season. Steve Agnew, Martin Smith, Agnew, so creative, looking in good form today. Not a bad cross, promising opening there by Sunderland. Agnew looks to the crowd, looks for encouragement from the full end, and he'll get it a plenty from a crowd of around 20,000 this afternoon. Left wing corner to Sunderland now some four minutes into the game. Anton Rogan, he knows the surroundings here very, very well, marshalling the middle wall defence. As it's Martin Smith clips it across, well, disappointing. I don't know whether he kept it low, but it certainly surprised the middle wall defence, but they scrambled it round there. In fact, it was Uwe Fuchs, the, the German striker, who's back in defence, who put that one behind. Middle walls on the rack here, over it comes to Agnew, nicely taken there by Casey Keller. He'll probably miss quite a few games from Millwall, in fact, just after the new year, because he's got a fair number of commitments for the United States, and that might give an opportunity to an old friend of ours here, Tim Carter, who's on the Millwall books. In fact, we were rather hoping that he might have made the subs bench this afternoon, but Tim, who's had a, a lot of clubs, he might well get on the team sheet at Millwall after the, uh, the new year. Craig Russell. No score is it, of course. Well policed there by Anton Rogan. Northern Ireland international, in fact. Made his name initially with Celtic, uh, but was then capped by, by Northern Ireland. But a sound player. A lot of people were rather sorry to see him leave Roker Park. Darius Kibitskin. Long one. Oh, my goodness me. Yes, there was, looks as if there was a certain amount of confusion in that uh, Millwall defence there. Something nearly got in. And... Uh, Casey Keller just uh, a little uncertain with his handling there. No score as yet. Some six minutes gone. And here it comes. The long throw again. Good header by Melville there. And Martin Smith nearly got on the end of it. But uh, Keller came out. Got his defence out of jail. Lavin. 
forward to Savage. And Savage opening play out across to Thatcher. And uh, Thatcher across to his opposite number there, Martin Scott, who nods in touch on this side of the field. Certainly when Millwall played here last year uh, in the Coca-Cola Cup, and they knocked something out of the Coca-Cola Cup over the two legs, a posse of top managers came to watch uh, Ben Thatcher and Martin Smith that night. Uh, Alex Ferguson, Manchester United, and Roy Evans from Liverpool. And well, that's going to cause no problems to Alec Chamberlain. And uh, quite a promising start, quite an attractive start, and certainly of the two goalkeepers, Casey Kellap has had the more to do at the Millwall end. As uh, Alec Chamberlain tees this one up, and certainly he's had tremendous protection from his rear guard this season. Sunderland having conceded only 15 goals in the championship, Millwall 21. Martin Smith back to Scott there. High up and under, Sunderland varying their play somewhat. And of course, without Paul Bracewell, then perhaps they'll have to remember to maintain their shape. This is Alex Ray. Third out for Fuchs. Fuchs could get the cross in here. Pulls it back. Surprised a few people. It wasn't a very good one. Ray wasn't there. Agnew read it well. And Sunderland have a good chance to counter-attack here. To Martin Smith. Brought down there. Crowd don't like it. Referee says play on. And it's Phil Gray here. Has he got anybody up with him? Chips it in the end. Gets under it. Took a bobble. Puts his hand out to acknowledge that perhaps he might have done better with a, a square ball. And uh, Casey Keller breathes again. Phil Gray, perhaps uh, disappointed, no doubt, to uh, be missing out on the European Nations Championships this next year with Northern Ireland. Dave Savage just going into referee Eddie Lomas's notebook there um, for that ill-judged challenge on Martin Smith. Clipped him, and uh, the crowd were not slow to express their their disapproval. Martin Smith again shows no ill effects. Flicked out nicely by Craig Russell. Up comes Kabitsky now. 90th game for Sunderland. He hasn't scored yet. Drills it in. Kelly go Keller goes down. Saves well, but another good effort by Kabitsky. He's been encouraged by Peter Reed to get forward, get into shooting positions, and have a go. He did that against Crystal Palace. It's a fine surging run. Through. Gets the ball again on his left foot. Not perhaps his strongest foot, but it was a good crisp shot all along the ground and Keller had, was really stretched to take it. Martin Scott back to Alec Chamberlain. Millwall going to get a free kick there, but a backing in by Phil Gray, and that's going to be Keith Stevens, the captain. The great record for Millwall in terms of appearances, 430 appearances, and that's the Sunderland skipper today, Richard Orr. And his differences last season with the Roker club, but he's... Uh, he really has had a good season at the heart of their defence. A quick word by referee Lomas for Chris Malkin, the former Tranmere Rovers striker. Always found goals hard to come by away from home, Chris Malkin. Let's hope that applies today. Prolific scorer at Prenton Park, but uh, not too good on his travels. Martin Scott. Phil Gray. Persistent, challenging. Loss of the hair doesn't seem to have affected him particularly. And uh, that's going to be a throw which Martin Scott will take. Had in tremendous form this season, the ex Bristol City player. And Martin Smith can't quite control that one. And it's going to be Millwall who get the throw. But Martin Smith, England under 21, man, last season, of course. Shed a bit of weight last, last close season. And uh, he looks as if he's coming back to his, uh, his best form. Kabitsky. Never missed a game since he joined Sunderland from. Aston Villa, initially on loan, and the Polish international has uh, certainly proved his worth to the club. Particularly at a time when John Kay, of course, was undergoing yet another broken leg problem. Lovely afternoon for football. Kibitsky, Michael Gray flicks on, Phil Gray misses it, and it's hacked clear by Stevens there for Millwall, nodded back to Martin Scott. And Millwall Bring it down a little. Right back, Jerry Lavin. Forward there to Dutch Doyle. Savage inside. Nicely cut out there by Richard Orr. Back now to that's Martin Gray. Nice to see Martin Gray back after his spell at Fulham. Sunderland's injury crisis uh, prompted his recall. And uh, when he moved south to Craven Cottage, he wasn't doing too badly in midfield. And uh, 
it's good to see him back in the uh, in the red and white shirt today. Millwall, of course, managed by Mick McCarthy. 57 caps for the Republic of Ireland. And uh, tipped by some as a possible successor to Jack Charlton. Uh, if Big Jack decides that enough's enough later this summer. That looks like, well, I thought it was Sunderland's ball too, Richard Ord. So uh, Richard uh, wasn't too happy with the linesman. And it's Thatcher who takes the throw for, for Millwall there. And it's Martin Scott. With a long ball cut out there, and uh, Savage equally not having much joy down this left side, and Sunderland knocking it about quite nicely. That's Andy Melville, who certainly uh, delighted the, the Welsh hierarchy. Bobby Gould, the manager in particular, with his performances for the, the Principality so far this season. Kabitsky now threading it through. Craig Russell to get across to, but it was uh, just expecting a bit much, and there was no real threat to the middle wall defence there. Sunderland, remember, two games in hand on Millwall, and two goals worse off than Millwall. That's all that keeps Peter Reid's men from being top of the Division I table. That may well alter by the end of this afternoon. <laughs> oh, Martin Gray went in there with his elbow, has, uh, has caught Uwe Fuchs, just checking to see if all his teeth are still there. And uh, then that's going to be a free kick to Millwall. And uh, Martin Gray marks his return to Roger Park with his, uh, his name going into the referee's notebook. Referee Eddie Lomas from, from Salford. From the National Health Trust, in fact, sounds appropriate if there are any injuries, as Thatcher takes the free kick. Martin Scott jumps well. And bit of challenging there from Phil Gray, but uh, we all haven't given this one up, but Sunderland getting everybody behind the ball. And Steve Agnew very much in the in the thick of things. Gray there. That's right. Forward to Fuchs. Martin Gray. Steve Agnew involved again. Agnew and Gray trying to win the ball, but we'll all have it. And uh, that won't cause any problems to, to Alec Chamberlain. Alex Ray, top scorer for Millwall in the last two years, came from Falkirk. He made 83 appearances for Falkirk before he came south of the border. He's a Scottish under-21 player, and there are quite a few people feel that if he wasn't with Millwall, if he was with a Premiership club, then he'd certainly have made the Scottish international squad before now. Another player in form there, Alex Chamberlain. Steve Agnew. Alex Ray. And now Michael Gray. Oh, that's a good one. Out to Craig Russell. Craig's going to turn it back to Martin Smith. Not a bad cross, tantalising. But uh, hung there too long for Phil Gray, really. And uh, Sunderland keep up the pressure, though. And this is going to be Martin Gray. Well, it's going to be Michael Gray who takes, takes the throw. It's going to be Michael. Kubitsky. This could be interesting. Oh, now, yes. Penalty no doubt about it at all. Phil Gray turned very quickly on Anton Rogan. His legs went, and there seemed to be little doubt at all that that collision. Watch it now. Here we are, straight down. There seemed to be little doubt there that the tackle by one Northern Ireland international on another was going to bring about a penalty kick. So this could be first blood to Sunderland after some 13 minutes. And it's got to be Martin Scott, scorer of two penalties already. Nice one, Sandlin, a goal up. No problem, says Martin Scott. One finger in the air, and in fact, that's his third penalty success of the season. It's his fourth goal. The other one came from a free kick against Watford. Very cool. Casey Keller dived completely the wrong way. And so, Martin Scott, his fourth goal of the season, put Sandlin a goal up. Probably deservedly so in terms of pressure and in terms of bringing the opposing goalkeeper into play and uh, credit also to Phil Gray who's very quick turn in the penalty area there caused uh, Anton Rogan to be a little rash in the challenge 
and there seemed little doubt that, uh, that it was a penalty. Martin Scott really delighted everybody, I think, since he came from Bristol City and uh, with Gary Arras, the fee, going the other way. And uh, Martin Graham out. Kubitsky, Kubitsky with a long one. That's a good variation of ball. Sometimes Sunderland play it along the deck through the middle. Other times go for the long one. That was the long one. Just too far ahead of, of Craig Russell. David Kelly injured today. Injured in the last second on Sunday. That's going to be a... The wall broke the fans predictably in uh, in good shape, in good voice. Not too many middle wall fans have made the journey. In fact, Fuchs now. Got all those red and white shirts back in defence at Agnew. Belts it clear. Hammered on again there by uh, Michael Gray. And Millwall will will take the throw. Good crowd as you would expect today. There's the Roker managerial team looking very satisfied so far. Bobby Saxton, middle. Paul Bracewell had his hernia operation, recovering now. Steve Smelt, Pop Robson, in charge of the reserves there. Good to see his experience again at Roker with the uh, wide parting. And it's going to be a now it's going to be a throw into Millwall. Fuchs puts himself about, busy player, and he's not there to get on the end of that. And Chamberlain's got all the time in the world to deal with that. Yes, Uwe Fuchs might have thought he was unlucky not to get a contract at, uh, at Teesside, but uh, Brian Robson in the end decided to go for Jan Fjortoft as his uh, overseas player. And uh, he hasn't let him down, but certainly Uwe Fuchs didn't either last season. That's Jason Van Blerk, despite his name, is Australian, not making any real impression on this game as yet. And uh, Anton Rogan's header into touch on the far side of the field. He was the man who tripped Phil Gray in the... 13th minute to produce a penalty for Sunderland. And that's too near Keller. Takes that very comfortably. There's no real breeze to affect the, the crosses today. Perfectly still late. Absolutely beautiful day for football. Doyle. Malkin. Doyle. Lavin. Some pretty stuff from Millwall here, but uh, not getting... Too, too far forward with it. Melville. Nice little head out of defence. And Martin Scott. Sunderland goal scorer. Sunderland one up. And looking good at the moment. Particularly in view of those who can't play today. Oh, Craig Russell's away. Now then, got an opportunity here. Support in the middle. Not quite. Steve Agnew not quite with it. Martin Gray is. Useful chip. Phil Gray couldn't get on the end of it. That's Craig Russell. Now then. Martin Scott, good header, didn't quite get on the end of it there, Phil Gray put himself about and goes into touch on the side of the field, Martin Smith now, looking for the throw from uh, Martin Scott, but it goes to Steve Agnew, looking a polished perform, Steve Agnew this afternoon, Martin Gray didn't make the best use of that, and it's Ben Thatcher, I don't think we'll stay at Millwall too long, particularly if they don't get up out of the, into the Premiership at the end of this season, both Thatcher and Alex Ray featured in the PFA's selected 11 at the end of last season for the, uh, the NC League Division 1 team. And that's uh, Kubitsky in front of the Sunderland bench there. A little bit of air ball, and it's going to be a free kick to Millwall. Martin Gray, the, the transgressor. He uh, was a clutch of midfield players here, of them all trying to get into the side, and so... Uh, it was then that Martin was declared surplus to requirements and uh, went off down to Hull, uh, to Fulham rather. Thatcher with a kick. Hoofed, hoofed on there by uh, Martin Gray. Now, Martin Smith down the left. Both Sunderland's wide players are essentially left-footers. Uh, Martin Scott on the overlap. Phil Gray, uh, Craig Russell charging in there and uh, puts Millwall under pressure and gets the corner kick. Craig Russell on two goals this season. But uh, he's looked sharp. He's looked sharp. He had a rather erratic time last time, but uh, he's been on the ball this time. Steve Agnew with the call. Martin Gray. Uh, Michael Gray. Uh, into no man's land there. Linesman's flag. Got it up? No. 
and Keja Keller has got plenty of time to, to think about this. Yes, the linesman's flag was up for offside, and Millwall with relieved to clear this. Sunderland 1, Millwall 0 then, and definitely Sunderland looking the better side, the more likely side at the moment. Remember a win today, if you need reminding, will put the Wearsiders clear at the top of the first division table with two games in hand. Andy Melville there, very much in command, enjoying his football this season with Sunderland and with Wales. And uh, shouting, which is the essential requirement for any good central defender organizing the defense and uh, that's paid dividends this season jason van blurk there the australian standing uh, or giving instructions to the uh, the middle wall side giving instructions probably to the referee about the wall and here it is who will curl it in with his left foot to the far side crooks is there nods it down for ray volley by ray well a possibility a possibility it was a shooting chance he was allowed a bit of space. It's the first time that any of the Millwall players have been allowed any any room, and uh, he perhaps might have done better. Here's the header down. Ray's there, left foot over the top of the inrushing Sunderland defence, and uh, no real problem for for Alec Chamberlain. So the Scotsman just off the mark, and uh, Chamberlain with with a kick. So there's no Bracewell this afternoon, no David Kelly, and no Kevin Ball. Kevin suspended, of course. No, Martin Smith wasn't going to get round Lavin, really. I think he's got the free kick. Um, didn't really see him any chance that he was going to uh, get round the outside. Here it is, he, he tries to flick it to the outside and go round, but um, in went Lavin, and they shall not pass. And so Sunderland have got the free kick, which Martin Scott will take. And the big men are up. Over it comes. And, uh, well, was he held? Well, certainly Craig Russell reckons that, uh, and Richard Ord there, reckon that uh, he was held, that arms were up and he was pulled down. And uh, referee, uh, referee Lomas just having words with the, the Sunderland skipper. And Richard Ord... Uh, not looking too happy about that. Doesn't get any chance to play cricket these days. Richard Ord used to be a cricketer with Merton. Quite a useful one, but uh, the requirements and length of the season now uh, put that out of the question. Played very well in the centre of the Sunderland defence this season. As has Andy Melville. Didn't quite get that one away. Martin Gray did. Phil Gray tried to find Michael Gray. All the Greys on parade today. And uh, Malkin missing out there. Sunderland clear comfortably enough long and that was Keith Stevens the middle wall captain very good captain too but his uh, collection of yellow cards means that he'll be suspended around about Christmas time and it's uh, Kubitsky with a throw Michael Gray not getting a great deal of change out of that side of the middle wall defence this afternoon so far Halfway through the first period, and that Martin Scott goal for Sunderland after 13 minutes separates the sides. No good clearance by Martin Scott. Too far for Craig Russell. Though. Stevens back to Keller. And Keller with the full will end breathing down his neck, waiting for him to miss it. Cleared it. And Martin Scott looking for the. Uh, the space is near the corners there, but uh, Phil Gray couldn't get there in time. But the crowd enjoying this lead. It's a good crowd, you'd expect, for this tabletop game. And, of course, the prospect of home games against Grimsby and uh, Birmingham City to come as well, who are promotion challengers in this very tight Division One table but before that they've got to go to Reading and Derby County in the next uh, fortnight and uh, that can be a tall order because there's not a great deal of daylight between the sides but um, certainly Derby are a useful side Reading perhaps not quite so Michael Gray there trying to get round but uh, Millwall have done their homework on him I think But he's got his got the throw there. 
and it'll be uh, Kabitsky. He had an injury last week. In fact, the, uh, the injury went right through to the bone uh, in his leg, and so there was a slight doubt about him, but happily he's, uh, he's OK. Agnew, really putting himself about here. Always in the thick of the action. Referee didn't like the way he put himself about there, and so that's going to be a, a free kick to Millwall. But Steve Agnew had a lot of bad luck through injuries this season, and uh, it's nice to see that now he's back in the side. He's really playing full of confidence. He scored one goal, and uh, he's taken over the Paul Bracewell mantle for the moment. Now that's sprayed too, too wide there. Pooks won't get to catch that, and uh, it'll be a throw in. To Sunderland one would imagine which Martin Scott will take Martin uh, Smith makes himself available and Millwall now ball out ball had gone over the line there and that's going to be a throw into Sunderland 1-0 Martin Scott's fourth goal of the season his third penalty after Phil Gray brought down by Anton Rogan. No real complaint from Millwall on that one. And uh, Mick McCarthy's tabletop inside certainly haven't had a great deal to offer so far this afternoon. They've been thwarted by this very sound, solid, safe Sunderland rear guard. And if Sunderland win this, as if you need reminding, they're firmly top of the league. They'll be three points clear they've got two games in hand and it's Christmas come early Alec Chamberlain ended last season on loan to Liverpool and yet uh, it's uh, a mark of his increasing confidence that uh, he's playing as well as at any time in his career Millwall throw in front of the Sunderland bench Peter Reid hasn't come down there yet, which is perhaps a, a sign of the confidence he's got in his team and the, uh, the way they're playing as the defence repel another Millwall invasion. But uh, Michael Gray being very closely challenged. That was a quick layoff to Martin Gray, and uh, Millwall turned his clearance into touch. Certainly, Millwall would be the team. Sandler would fear in terms of real challenges. Derby County are another possibility. Tranmere Overs, who've played one game less than Sunderland, in fact, and are currently three points behind them, four points behind them. Now, this looks promising. Can Russell get in? No. Lavin for Millwall. Nice little touch by Savage. Sets Roy Doyle going. But, uh, certainly the Millwall midfield haven't uh, set the game alight. And haven't really posed too many problems for the Sunderland. That's a nice confident ball across, which illustrates the uh, how easy Sunderland feel on the ball these days. One defeat in 13 games, remember. Agnew. Very much the, the hub this afternoon. Scott. Phil Gray again, putting in the pressure. Anton Rogan nodding into touch. And uh, this useful position here for Sunderland. Martin Scott, their goal scorer. But uh, Millwall read that one, and there was no real danger coming for that. Now, is Hook's going to get away here? He might just manage to slip Richard Orr. And that's Jason Van Blerk, the Australian, out on the, on the left. That's Thatcher, and that's Alex Ray. Van Blurk. And this is quite a promising Millwall move. Now this is Fuchs. His close dribble didn't come off. Martin Gray there with a persistent challenge. Van Blurk. Michael Gray won it well. Suddenly getting players right behind the ball. Tremendous willingness to work hard. Doyle. Thatcher. Now, Millwall trying to create something. Just coming into it now. Not a bad cross. Oh, my goodness me. That was moments of anxiety in the Sunderland defence. It was skipper Richard Ord who got there in the end. And 
sliced it over the bar, but really, Uwe Fuchs nearly got away. Watch him, onto the far side of the goal, just wide of the far post, and he manages to flick it back, and uh, it looked really as if Alec Chamberlain had it covered, but uh, Richard Ord was there just in time anyway, and just in case, to whip it over the bar. Oh, that's a wretched one. Wretched one from Doyle. Sunderland dispatched that fairly quickly, but we're all having a useful spell just at the moment. Lovely ball from Agnew now. Martin Smith. Has he got support though? Yes. Great run through the middle there. In fact, great run there by Craig Russell. Oh, that's a great goal. Craig Russell, superb run there. Martin Smith just held up his run, delayed things till Craig Russell overtook him, releasing it just the right time. And Craig Russell timed his left foot shot so beautifully, just inside that upright. Here it comes again. Martin Smith brings it down beautifully on his left foot while still keeping moving. Look at Craig Russell going through the middle like a tank, just inside the area. Cracks it wide of Casey Keller. What a superbly orchestrated goal. So we've been playing for half an hour. Martin Scott, the scorer of the first goal from the penalty spot. And now Craig Russell makes it 2 0. And Sunderland can already see that league table with themselves sitting three points ahead of Millwall and two games in hand. So the sun shining in more ways than one at Roker Park. Back due to Scott. Martin Smith putting uh, Lavin under pressure and inevitably of course Sunderland with their tails up and uh, free kick given against Sunderland there after Steve Agnew went in and uh, well well done Craig Russell player of great promise here Sunderland he's perhaps hasn't moved as quickly as some people felt he would in terms of development but uh, he is young and uh, a lot was expected of him in the days when the team was struggling and uh, he uh, certainly took his goal very well and that's a lovely ball then across to Phil Gray now what can Phil Gray do can he get a shot delayed his shot and he pulled it across the goal didn't quite get the momentum going there he was being closed down as he ran through and he wasn't really going to get full power on me but uh, He's had his differences over the last fortnight, Phil Gray, but uh, as ever, he's giving 110% out here. Now he just, his touch there just takes the ball a bit too far forward, and he really couldn't get over the ball to get enough power and body weight behind the shot. So, in terms of pressure, in terms of putting pressure on the opposing goalkeeper, well, certainly Sunderland have it, and lead deservedly. By two goals to him. Savage now tries to get it through, but uh, he sense that it's uh, the Sunderland defence's day at the moment, and Millwall haven't got too much to offer. Malkin has been a non entity, really, and now it's full back Lavin to Stevens. Savage. Promising run, but Agnew again. What a great job tidying up in the front. Look at that. Ran out of its sight. It was a good challenge by Malkin, though. Must have heard my comment about him a moment ago. Savage now drills it across. And uh, Van Blerk too far in. Nobody wide there for Millwall. But it is for Sunderland here. Michael Gray. And uh, the linesman's flag was up. And uh, there it is, down there. So... Martin Scott's fourth goal of the season, Craig Russell's third goal of the season. And it's something two, little wall nil. And that should make the pies taste all that much nicer at half time. Kubitsky there, toppled unceremoniously. Thatcher runs it into touch. And uh, he's had a throw into Sunderland. Now they're going to get a free kick there. Now they're going to get a throw in. And the referee there, Eddie Lomas, goes over and has a quick word with um, Paul Bracewell in the, uh, in the Sunderland dugout. I don't know what that was all about. And uh, a bit of coaching from the, the sidelines, perhaps.
but he competently read there by Richard Orr, competently cleared. Stevens in the centre of the Millwall defence, not to get back. He's going to have to repeat the exercise. And Millwall really have been out fought in midfield here. Sunderland have been tigerish all the time. Let's see what Fuchs can do now. Millwall got to pull one goal back. That brings a bit of unease into uh, the leading side, but they don't really look like it. This is Ray. Savage. Cut out straight away by Martin Smith there. Now Craig was scored at the second goal. Good run on his game today. Full of running, full of bounce, full of confidence, as this fellow is as well. And a right foot cross. Didn't quite come off that time. Michael Gray. Kabitsky. He would love to get on the score sheet. This is his 90th game. Hasn't hit the target yet. I haven't hit the, the back of the net yet, I should say. Uh, but not that time. It'll be Levin. Again, tenacity there by Sunderland in the middle of the field. Wins the ball. Scott goes for the long one. And Phil Gray. Beaten out of it by Stevens and uh, Sunderland welcome the throw. 2 0. And still about eight or nine minutes to half time. Scott with the long one. Martin Smithson, nice little layoff. Agnew in command in midfield. Having a great opening 45 minutes. But uh, it's Malkin who gets away. Wants a Tranmere, 400,000 pounds worth of uh, striker. And uh, not a very good ball. He was under pressure from the central defence and there was no real way that Hoops was going to get that, despite what he said. And... Uh, Persevering there, trying to uh, unsettle Alec Chamberlain. It's uh, a sign of frustration as much as anything, that way. And then Martin Scott will clear at his leisure. Martin Smith now beautifully brought down with his right foot this time. When he created the last goal, it was with his left. And that was with his right. Couldn't quite bring it down to give to uh, Phil Gray. Harassing Savage, pushing Millwall back all the time. Sunderland always getting plenty of men behind the ball. Now they have a bit of space now, the Londoners, but that was a good challenge from Kubitsky. It looks as if he's got Jason Van Blerk under control on the far side of the field, the Australian. And that's Martin Gray covering on the far side of the field. Pushing from behind by Melville, use of the arms. And that's going to be a a free kick to Millwall and certainly the Welsh revival late on in the European Nations competition I think was due in no small measure to Andy Melville's improved form and the confidence that he's got from playing in this efficient Sunderland defence now lined up for Ray drills it ah, swinging wide Chamberlain felt there was no problem and an uh, exchange of views between Alex Ray and one or two teammates. He let it run too far, if you watch him here. And he hits it with the outside of his foot. And it was always swinging well wide of the, uh, the Roker end goal, defended by Alex Chamberlain. 2-0 to Sunderland. One or two people going down the stairs for the uh, cup of tea or coffee and the pies. And they'll be able to savour those this afternoon on the back of this 2-0 scoreline at the moment. Melville to Chamberlain and Sutton prepared to play themselves out of trouble got a lot of shape now then Phil Gray trying to bustle past Anton Rogan again the last time they clashed it was a penalty to Sunderland which Martin Scott opened the scoring with and that time Rogan wins it clears into touch he did express moment of surprise when the penalty was awarded against him Anton Rogan so he might just have a slight chunner on his way to the dressing room at the half time but it's a left wing corner to Sunderland which uh, it's going to be Michael Gray right foot out comes Keller a long way decided straight away that it was going to be his and he came out and he took it very well
a good keeper on his day, but he, he had a stinker against Watford last Saturday and really gifted Glen Roder's side the three points. Lost their last three games. Millwall, let's see what Van Blurk can do. Uh, took a bobble though, and his left foot shot uh, went high over the bar. Lost their last three games, Millwall. Last two at home to Charlton and Watford. They then lost at Stoke. And uh, they've only taken two points out of their last five games. Uh, whereas Sunderland have won three, drawn one, and lost one of their last five games. The Roker men have only lost one in the last 13 league games. Having a great run. Amazing the confidence that Peter Reid has instilled into players who not so long ago were fifth from bottom in the league table. And Chamberlain sliced that slightly. Martin Gray got under it, partially retrieved the situation. Oh, Van Blurk, nice move, makes a bit of space for himself. But uh, Sunderland cover well. Rogan's header there into the crowd on the far side of the field, just in front, just past the visitors' dugout. And uh, Kubitsky will take the uh, take the throw. Sunderland quite happy to keep possession, I would imagine, and uh, play out the half. If they can go in, two 0 up. There you are. The clock shows about three minutes to go to half time, and. Uh, I'm sure Sunderland will be quite happy to keep it at 2-0. If Millwall were to get a goal back before half-time, and it doesn't look like it, then um, I'm sure that certain anxiety would creep into the, the home fans and uh, through them to, the, to the communicate itself to the players. But uh, certainly Millwall don't look like it at the moment. Melville takes the kick. The opposite number, Anton Rogan, heads out. Thatcher completing the clearance. Slightly, slightly mistimed uh, lunge there by Andrew Melville, and that's uh, that's a free kick to the men from the New Den. Richard Orr, captain, captain in the absence of the suspended Kevin Ball, clearing it there. Kubitsky. Nice header by Craig Russell, did well to get up there, he was being harassed from behind. Got a clean header on it, took his, took his goal beautifully. Nice crisp left foot finish. Look forward to seeing that again later this afternoon. And it's Stevens now clearing for middle wall. Fuchs hooks it through and confident Kubitsky, nice nod back to Chamberlain. Oh, Martin Scott dwelling on it just a little too long. Uwe Fuchs here, who's the, working very hard, and looks the salvation for Middlewall, possibly, if they're going to get one this afternoon. But that was a rather rash challenge. And what's the referee going to make of it? Both Scott and Fuchs look uh, as if they were um, offended by it. Oh, a little smile there from Martin Scott. Uh, referee got the uh, diplomatic touch. And we wait to see whether it's going to be Jerry Lavin or Jason Van Blurk who takes the clear, who takes the free kick. Van Blurk it is, Chamberlain takes it comfortably. No real pressure, no real height on this as such, and no power either. Wasn't driven across, requiring a touch, just a touch from either attacker or defender. It was floated across and not a very good free kick. And uh, Alec Chamberlain took it very comfortably. I don't think we'll have any injury time. No, we'll have it. That's it. Referee decides it. That's it. Eddie Lomas. 45 minutes are up. An entertaining half. Martin Scott, scorer of goal number one. Craig Russell, scorer of goal number two. An impressive Sunderland performance, which confirms that they look very much on the evidence of the first 45 minutes, as if it's going to be Sunderland who topped the Ensley League Division One tonight. A half-time score. Sunderland two. Millwall nil. So the sides back on the field for the second half of this table topping game Sunderland against Millwall Sunderland 2 Millwall 0 Martin Scott from the penalty spot with his fourth goal of the season and then a magnificent goal Craig Russell's third goal of the season after superb approach work by Martin Smith 
making it 2 0 after a very convincing first half performance by Sunderland. Steve Agnew outstanding in midfield, defence very composed. Second half underway. Mr. Lomas blows his whistle. No changes. And it's Michael Gray. Michael Gray generally well held in the first half. And uh, it took a, a burst through the middle to bring about the goals. Phil Gray fouled by Anton Rogan to bring up the first penalty. And then, of course, Craig Russell latching on to that through ball from Martin Smith to score probably the best goal of the season so far seen at Roker Park by the Wearsiders. Michael Gray got two men on him straight away. That's the way Millwall are playing this as Kubitsky crosses. Keller takes it under pressure from Phil Gray there and Andy Melville. And, uh, been by far the busier of the two keepers in the first 46 minutes. And that's going to be a throw taken by fullback Gerald Lavin. Savage. It shows promise at times, Savage, but some would have well held it up till now. But uh, let's see what this brings. And the Melville read it very well. Nice ball to Phil Gray along the ground. So it was uh, a nice one for the Northern Ireland International. Didn't have to jump for it or run for it. Martin Scott. Sunderland He's ready for these two away games at Reading and Derby County. So a good result today would really set them up. This is Savage from Millwall to Alex Ray. A disappointing afternoon. That ball just about sums it up. Richard Ord, skipper for the day. Oh, this is promising. Craig Russell. And oh, well, he might have done better. He was falling away from it at the time. It was a lovely weighted chip in. Here, here it comes from the skipper. Right across. Craig, Phil Gray, good header on. Craig Russell. But he was leaning away from it. Couldn't quite direct it down. But otherwise, that was a good opportunity for the youngster to have got his second of the match in Sunderland's third. Nice flick on, too, by Phil Gray there. Just inside the penalty area. Good corkscrewing header on. Richard Ord, well-weighted cross. Skipper for the day, Richard Ord, has uh, getting ball suspended, of course. Russell up front on his own and uh, doing very well actually. <laughs> and that's going to be uh, a throw into Sunderland there. Certainly the Sunderland midfield have played very well indeed this afternoon. Steve Agnew's been in the thick of things and uh, there is still talk, of course, of Gareth Hall coming here from Chelsea. And the deal is still alive. And it may well come to something this next week. And he would certainly strengthen the Sunderland midfield from the personnel point of view. But certainly the, the midfielders on the, on the books at the moment are uh, showing that they're, they're a pretty dependable unit. No more so than Steve Agnew heading it forward there. He's had a good game so far. Had a good game last Sunday, perhaps went a little off the ball in the pouring rain of the second half against Crystal Palace, but uh, he's certainly adapting well to taking over the poor base for Mantle while Grace gets over his hernia operation. Mr Lomas, out comes his uh, yellow card, and uh, he's giving that to Chris Malkin, Wants at Tranmere and uh, out of sorts. He scored seven goals this season, Chris Malkin, but uh, has not really looked like pulling up any trees this afternoon. Richard Ord waving his, uh, his men forward.
Martin Scott will throw. Five minutes into the second half. And play just quiet at the moment after that near miss for Sunderland with Craig Russell going quite close. Peter Reid now down on the bench as he often is for the, the second half. No need to get anxious in the opening 45 minutes with Sunderland taking a two goal lead. But now Peter comes down to sit in his blue anorak there beside Steve Smelt, Paul Bracewell, Bobby Saxton. And uh, direct operations as Sunderland move forward as they've done for most of this game. Martin Scott. Now, nice Phil Gray to Martin Smith. It's now closed down, but it's uh, Scott. For the oh, that's a great ball. Martin Scott got the header in over oh, it came, and Phil Gray lurking on the six yard area powered his header past Casey Keller. The new wall defense absolutely nowhere as it was five minutes ago. No doubt about it. Martin Scott across Phil Gray leaps there, completely gets between uh, Ben Thatcher and Stevens. Powers the ball into the back of the net. Beautiful goal. So Phil Gray makes it 3 0 to Sunderland in the 52nd minute. And with Craig Russell getting number two halfway through the first half. And Martin Scott opening the scoring from the penalty spot. It's Sunderland 3, Millwall 0. And if you care to throw in that Phil Gray header that went over the top where it perhaps should have gone under in the opening minutes and a Craig Russell header that was saved by Kellup then it really could have been a rout today but Sunderland in great shape 3-0 up and that is a fair reflection of the play Phil Gray 7th of the season as uh, Kubitsky plays it long Craig Russell who's worked tirelessly up front full of confidence the youngster Enjoying playing in a successful side, which is something he's not really had the, the pleasure of doing since he uh, first showed promise in the books here at Local Park. Martin Scott, out now to Martin Smith. And uh, in comes Richard Ord. Richard Ord's uh, had one or two forays down that left, left side and uh, nearly produced a goal for Craig Russell just after half-time. Wall building pretty carefully, but uh, not really shown very much shape this afternoon. And McCarthy will have no excuses. It's Ben Thatcher out. His marking was sadly at fault there when uh, Phil Gray went in for the crucial header that brought the, the third goal. And uh, one could ask questions of the marking of Ben Thatcher and Keith Stevens in the middle wall defence. And there is Kubitsky, his 90th game, and a very happy one too for him and the club. Well taken by Alex Chamberlain. Easy one, just under the bar. And really the, uh, the Sunderland keeper hasn't had a break sweat at all this afternoon. They're going to win the league, chant the crowd. Well, they're going some way towards that. At the end of this afternoon, they are going to be three points clear of Millwall. They're going to have scored more goals, and they've got two games in hand. And that, at the moment, is promotion four. Thatcher threading it down the, the left wing. That was a slightly loose clue, but Malkin can't get anything out of it. Keith Stevens, the Millwall skipper. To Lavin. And that's Martin Scott. Not, uh, not the best of headers there, though. But uh, once again, Steve Agnew gets in. The referee doesn't like it. Gives a free kick against him. And uh, some of the midfielder isn't too happy about that. But it uh, typifies his determined challenge all this afternoon. He's got stuck in. He's won the ball. And not given Millwall a minute to settle on. I remember that Sunday won two on at the new den earlier in the season. Goes from... Uh, Martin's uh, Martin Scott penalty and from Martin Smith. <laughs> Jim Lennick was thought he was going to catch that, then decided he could comfortably leave it. Just asks his defence to uh, to shout for it, keep the lines of communication going, and uh, all the way. Three nil. Crowd in great form, great move. Who can blame them? 
uh, it's a while since uh, Sunderland uh, were in such stunning form at home. A lot of that early season promise that they displayed when they were away, but they're now beginning to display here. Phil Gray again. Ah, oh, there's a keeper, unorthodox, but effective. And uh, one reminder, in fact, that although none of the Sunderland players at the moment are on a hat trick, the last player to get a hat trick was Don Goodman against Millwall some three, nearly four years ago. Phil Gray. 3 0 at the moment. No, couldn't quite pull that one back. Two players in the middle there. Uh, acknowledges that. But, uh, Michael Gray had arrived. Martin Smith had arrived. But, uh, Phil Gray looks happy, very relaxed. Got a goal. And that will help to re cement the relationship between the Northern Ireland International and the Roka fans after his transfer request last week had uh, just led to a mixed reception for him when he came on a substitute against Crystal Palace. That's Martin Graham, back from his uh, lone spell at Fulham to help the uh, emergency in midfield. No, Michael can't get past Thatcher. I must say that Thatcher has, uh, he's a very highly regarded left back and he's certainly uh, not giving Michael Gray too much room this afternoon. And he's got the ball again. And Blurk there. And there's a a long one for Chris Malkin to chase, the former Tranmere player. And, uh, well, some might have thought the referee might have given it, but uh, it was a free kick, but uh, not so. Kabitsky and Michael Gray just having their problems against Malkin and Alex Ray. And, uh, well, that for me didn't look as much uh, an offence as the one just two or three tackles ago, but uh, referee Eddie Lomas thinks otherwise, and that's going to be a free kick to the visitors. Referee for something going at Tranmere, Eddie Lomas. And uh, did a good job this afternoon. Anton Rogan, 16 caps for Northern Ireland. Old boy of this club, Sunderland. Gave away the penalty. Gave his old club their opening goal. And Craig Russell just got a little too much power on that. But uh, the throw in runs straight through there to goalkeeper Casey Keller. Oh, Thatcher, that was a well, a risky thing to do by the left back. Michael Gray nearly punished him for it. Oh, now Steve Agnew, can he profit from this now? Rogan whacks it clear. And really, Millwall, all at sixes and sevens. A bad day for them. They're in a bad run. They've just got two points out of five games. They've lost the last three games. And. Uh, Things not too happy at all. Indeed, last season they they flattered to deceive. They played well early in the season, then they faded and ended up finishing 12th. Phil Gray. Can Martin Smith get on the end of that? He does indeed. Always oh, a chance for it's there and a great goal from Craig Russell. Phil Gray started it onto Martin Smith, overcame the cross. Millwall defence absolutely nowhere. And there was Craig Russell flicking himself in to nod in number four. Four nil to Sunderland after 58 minutes. Look at no Millwall defence at all. Ben Thatcher says it all. Where is everybody? Absolutely split apart by this uh, Sunderland display. Well, when Don Goodman got his hat-trick against Millwall three years ago, it was 6-2 to the rear side I wonder if they're going to go nap today, or get six. But it's certainly a tremendous performance. The crowd, great spirits, great voice. As I say, it's Christmas come early. And uh, there's no challenge here, really, for Millwall. Certainly, it's going to put the side in great shape to go down to Reading and Derby County before they come home here to face Grimsby on Boxing Day and Birmingham City. The last opponents of uh, 1995. That could be nasty. He's gone over the advertising hoarding. He's taken a bit of a tumble there. I think that looks like it might be Dave Savage. Uh, Steve Smelt, one of the first on the scene. Uh, a commercially orientated steward puts the advertising straight back up. Uh, but uh, we hope he's not too badly hurt. Uh, took a bit of a tumble. 
Ray anyway, Fuchs now jostling there with uh, Martin Gray. But the Sunderland man wins it. And uh, back to his goalkeeper. Going to win the league, say the crowd. And who can say that they're wrong on this afternoon's show? Well, a chance for Millwall now. And Blurk inside there looking for Doyle, but uh, not being Doyle's day really. What can Savage do? Restored to action. Gets the ball across anyway. Did well there, but it's one of the first times that Millwall have uh, really threatened. And Richard Ord getting cross again with his defence. Where were you? What's happening? And so on. And uh, putting himself about. Back to the skipper. Asking questions, even though some of the four up. No time for slackness here. A mean machine in defence, only 15 goals conceded. Could have caused problems that. It was uh, it swung in. There's no real wind to uh, assist it at all. And fortunately, there was no middle wall head on the end of it. But it obviously eluded everybody. And it's a goal kick. And the referee just having a word there with Alex Ray, not for the first time this afternoon. The uh, Scotsman's a little bit out of sorts. And that's the Millwall bench. Mick McCarthy having plenty to say. A resolute centre-half in his Barnsley and Manchester City days. 57 caps for the Republic of Ireland. And uh, Ian Evans, his, uh, his assistant, who of course played for Wales. Queen's Park Rangers, I'm sure between them they'll, uh, they'll have a fair bit to say and have a fair bit to say to the players after this, uh, this performance which uh, will not have gone down very well with uh, the straight-talking Irish international. A blunt Yorkshireman with an Irish pedigree, Mick McCarthy. A Jack Charlton Irishman, Craig Russell. Back now to Scott, give and go with Martin Smith, but it's Millwall managed to clear it. Richard Ord. Kubitsky. Millwall instantly, you see, Kavitsky straight in, challenges Malkin. Malkin has no time at all to settle on the ball, and uh, some of them there. And we get the free kick here. Steve Agnew initially going to take it, so was Martin Gray. Martin Gray still is going to take it. I think they thought Andy Miller was coming up. Gives it to Richard Orr. Martin Scott. Martin Smith. And uh, a long one from Scott there for Phil Gray to chase. Phil Gray, who got uh, goal number three. Martin Smith in the bottom corner there. Tantalising Joel Lavin. Right foot cross for Smith. Neat header back on again. Again, that move that Sunderland have worked on, obviously, in training. The little flick to the edge of the penalty area. The back header across the goal. Uh, has produced dividends this afternoon. Notably for Notably for Craig Russell with the third game. Ray here to Malkin. He can get a, a foot in. Comes out to Thatcher. To Malkin. One-legged Malkin. To Doyle, to Lavin, Savage, back to Doyle. Well, a hopeful shot, miss hit by Doyle. He laboured there about uh, the walls build up. There's a difference between a patient build up and a laboured build up. And the walls comes into the latter. And this one, Phil Gray to Craig Russell now. Is he on a hat trick at all? He's got two of the four. Martin Smith. Sliced it behind, and uh, I didn't take a deflection. I took a deflection. And it's going to be a corner to Sunderland, which Martin Gray, when he's sorted out his tie-ups, Martin Gray, Martin Smith, when he's sorted out his tie-ups, will take 4-0 to Sunderland, and we've still got 25 minutes to go. And a few instructions there in the. Um, in the middle wall defence, Lee McRobert has come on. Um, 
as Mick McCarthy rings the changes. Uwe Fuchs back there in, uh, in defence as well, helping out. Big strong player, perhaps lacks a little touch of speed, perhaps that's what uh, persuaded Brian Robson not to keep him down at Ayrson Park. Right wing corner, which Michael Gray is going to take here. Absolutely still, as you can see from that flag. And this could be interesting for Sunderland. Now, Kubitsky, though, he's going to find Michael Gray. Michael Gray's not got much change out of Thatcher this afternoon. Going to get round McRobert, though. Crosses right footed there, you notice. And wins a corner. Oh, had a torrid time this afternoon. 4-0. Martin Scott, Craig Russell, 2, and Phil Gray. The goal scorers. 4-0, and it might have been more. <laughs> Safety first by Martin Scott. Stabs it forward there. And the middle wall players goes down. Referee won't uh, take any notice of his appeal for the challenge by Steve Agnew there. And understandably, Alec Chamberlain wants all the Sunderland players up as fast as possible. A towering clearance, no doubt, here. Get things on the way. Certainly, Sunderland's most effective thrusts of the day have tended to come down the left in the second half and through the middle in the first half. 2-0 at half-time if you missed the first half for any reason. Martin Scott. Nothing coming of that. And Millwall certainly going to be a thoughtful long journey home for them tonight. And Steve Agnew closing down Millwall as he's done so successfully so far today. And a positive run forward there from Van Blerk. And this is Lee McRobert. Played in midweek in the defeat by Charlton on the New Den. This is Martin Smith. Can he break? No, he can't quite get through. It's a good challenge by McRobert. To Doyle, and then played out to Van Blurk. The Australian out on the left. To Doyle. And Millwall, really, they've run out of ideas, I think, of how to get through this very competent Sunderland midfield and defence. And... Uh, one has to say that one wonders quite how Millwall have uh, managed to get to the top of the league if, uh, if they can play like this, but presumably they will say that it's, uh, it's Sunderland's skill and perhaps it just isn't their day. They're in a bad run at the moment. It's going to be two points out of six games for them at the end of this one as Sunderland go on to one defeat out of 14 and their fourth successive home win. And that's going to be a goal kick. Um, no real pattern to the middle wall play. So Sunderland will pick up their fourth win in succession at Roker Park, and it's uh, it's a while since that happened. Remember, they've beaten Barnsley 2-1, beaten Sheffield United 2-0, Crystal Palace 1-0, and now at the moment they've beaten Millwall 4-0. And the number of goals they've conceded in that time has been pretty minimal. Only 15 all season. Nice run here. Threaded through here for Craig Russell. This is the hat trick. Bounces free there to Michael Gray, but just intercepted in the nick of time. So Craig Russell, very sharp, putting Millwall under pressure. Nicely weighted ball through here from Martin Scott. In goes Craig. Doesn't quite get there. 
and Millwall cover across and concede the corner. 4-0. And we've got just under 20 minutes to go of an entertaining game. Michael Gray. Too long. In fact, Phil Gray ran in inside the corner there instead of staying out beyond the back post. And it's Doyle. Sprays it out there to Savage. Savage. Well closed by uh, Martin Gray. And it's Martin Scott who supplies the long ball that Casey Keller eventually has to fly kick clear. Phil Gray and Keith Stevens help each other up after that little tussle and Sunderland get the resultant throw in. A game which people who've gone Christmas shopping will be sorry to have missed. In fact, Martin Gray to Martin Scott. And that's Phil Gray trying to go through there. Keith Stevens keeping a close watch on Phil Gray. Uh, he'll be leaving the middle wall scene for a short while soon, Keith Stevens, because he's got a lot of other penalty points. And another substitution for Millwall brings on Scott Taylor as uh, Phil Gray pulling it back there. That's it. And that's Gray Russell's hat trick. Phil Gray, the provider again, 17 minutes to go. So the 73rd minute, it's Sunderland 5, Millwall 0, and Craig Russell, the hat-trick hero of Roker Park and Wearside. Watch this. Gray turns, loses his marker. Stevens again, hooks it across, and Craig Russell, despite the attention of two Millwall defenders, rose and nodded it in so easily. 5-0, Craig Russell 3 Phil Gray one and Martin Scott two nil at half time five nil now and time for still more Sunderland go nap five nil over the team this morning at the top of the league so no doubt about it Wearside will be at the top of the first division tonight Martin Gray, push down there, I think they'll get a free kick for that. Not any great problem. Peter Reed still wants it to go, that's it, the clenched fist, get on, don't slack it off. Start again, 5-0, crack on. Helps the goals total this, and that could well be crucial later on in the season. Because Sunderland, of course, for a while now, if not for several seasons, have lacked the capacity to get goals. Here they come again. Good turn by Russell. Didn't quite get through. The ball running for some little time, it has to be said. But uh, they've now scored 27 goals compared to Millwall's 24. And that's a very useful boost for their goal difference. Which was a little uninspiring before the start of this game. And also, if nothing succeeds like success, it's a great boost for morale and confidence in the team. Richard Ord there forward to Martin Gray. Nice to see Martin come back and uh, share in the celebrations today. He's been in the in the shadows a little bit here at Roker Park. And of course he's been now to Fulham on loan. When he uh, had the strange experience of being sent off with mistaken identity. Uh, Craig Russell out there to Michael Gray. The crowd cheering every pass as well. Then. Nice sinewy move here. Not a bad effort. Crazy Keller <coughs> move a little slowly, I thought there. Some might say he had it covered, but uh, he went down in a rather laboured fashion. And uh, if that ball had been a yard to the right, uh, I wonder if the American keeper would have got across to him. Michael Gray's been pretty well handled this afternoon by Ben Thatcher, the promising middle left back. Um, but of course, that has created opportunities elsewhere for Sunday. Notably down the left and through the middle. <laughs> There's Agnew and uh, Kubitsky getting each other's way, but here's Michael Gray released on the right. 
tries to go inside because he's a naturally left-sided player so instinctively cuts inside and of course Millwall have uh, sorted that one and uh, Michael Gray puts his hand up hopes that perhaps the referee might uh, give him a free kick but no job one of the players, one of the many players who have really benefited since Peter Reid came to the club and playing with a tremendous enthusiasm, flair and a really positive and incisive approach. Michael Graham. 5 0. Patrick Hero, Craig Russell. Three Sunderland players in for that ball against two Millwall players. That's a sign of the. Uh, the spirit here at Roker Park. <laughs> well, the Martin Smith will get away with that. No. Brother Lavin will get the, get the free kick. As we've got about 13 minutes to go. 5 0 to Sunderland. And uh, they've not seen a day like this at Roker Park for quite some time. Good clearance by uh, Casey Keller. And uh, throwing to Sunderland. Alex Ray has been a disappointment this afternoon. He's not really got into the game. Really enjoyed himself. And uh, McCarthy will have the difficult job, really, of lifting this uh, this Millwall side that's very definitely gone off the boil in the last month. Good play here by Kubitsky. Craig Russell, man in the moment, turns well. Ooh, that's such a nice one, Agnew's there. Looking for his second goal of the season. And Keller read it well, and the waiting on it was just a little too great for Steve Agnew to get to. And uh, Keller came out and spread himself and, uh, and took it took it well. But all the Sunday players, I think, this afternoon will feel that they've contributed, they've had a good game. Oh, that's a beautiful skill, Bill Gray. Got space here. Can he cross it? Yes, he can. And it's Craig Russell. Is this number four? No, oh, how did he miss it? My goodness. <laughs> well, he'll be thinking about his hat trick that he did get, but he might even think of the one or two that he might have got as well. Look at this. Credit to Casey Keller. He came out, spread himself, saved well, but really, perhaps Craig Russell, if he'd first timed it from the cross, might have made it count. Martin Smith. Millwall defence again. Gone walkies completely. Nobody there. And I think that uh, Millwall players will be just dying to hear that final whistle, which is in about 11 minutes' time here, because uh, on the receiving end of this 5 0 drubbing, which is going to put daylight between Sunderland and the uh, the rest of the league Michael Gray really coming into his own now in the last quarter of an hour of this game McRobert inside there to Alex Ray to Savage and uh, Sudden defence which has had a fairly easy second half it has to be said Millwall haven't uh, really threatened and uh, there's going to be no challenge from that particular approach and not too many fans leaving here at the moment uh, uh, been a good gate this afternoon and they obviously want to stay and see if the lads are going to get any more goals they've got ten minutes to go five nil up at the moment and every indication that uh, Sunderland might get one or two more. Certainly, if you look back at the missed opportunities, Phil Gray might have scored one, Craig Russell might have scored another two. And so, it could have been quite a scoreline this afternoon. It could, in some ways, have been the biggest scoreline in Sunderland's favour since they annihilated South End 7 0 here, um, way back in 1987. Richard Ord's held the line this afternoon. 
and certainly he hasn't really tolerated any slackness on the part of any other defenders. This is Doyle. Stevens. Possibility here. Uh, not really too much waiting on the ball. No real threat. And Millwall will no doubt have a bit of thinking to do while Sunderland Sullivan. Alec Chamberlain certainly had one of his easier days. Now, what can Uwe Fuchs do? Can he get some consolation from Millwall? McRobert. Sunderland defends a well back. Agnew's in there, spoiling, breaking up the road. That's nice, very cool. Martin Gray out to Michael Gray. And Millwall stretched, having been forward there. Just let them get back a little bit. It's Martin Gray. Martin Scott, Steve Agnew. A little brisk challenge on Phil Gray by Keith Stevens. Nothing wrong with it, though. But Sunderland come back again. Agnew it is. Not a good one now from uh, Martin from Richard Orwell. And nobody hears the, the whistle, which is going to work in Sunderland's uh, advantage. The linesman's flag is up. And then. Um, Keep the Chamberlain, just tease it up. 5 nil. Seven minutes to go. And can Craig Russell get on the end of that? And now Joel Lemon consigns it briskly into the crowd. Very sharp this afternoon, going to do wonders for his confidence. He's gone from two goals to five goals in his uh, aggregate. Martin Smith, nice little prod through there. Martin Gray, Craig Russell shoots. Great effort on the turn, quick one. Casey Keller well placed just beside the post. Took it comfortably, but it was a nice little pass just dinked through by Martin Gray. And uh, the wall coming back. Van Blurk. Oh. Almost a slow motion ball for Grace there. And uh, he's going to get the free kick. There's uh, Darius, who's not really given any, any quarter this afternoon. And uh, is it going to be McRobert who takes it? No. Seems as if it is. Looks as if it's Savage who's come over, in fact. McRobert runs over it. Savage flicks it across, headed out by the Sunderland defence to Doyle, Morris Doyle. Agnew again, back, sitting just in front of the back four there. It's Van Blurk it is, who's uh, stabbed it out here to substitute Scott Taylor. But, uh, let's see if Michael Gray can produce a great moment towards the end of the game to really set the seal on what's been a very fine Sunderland performance. It looked as if it was Van Blurk there who'd uh, kicked the ball away a little. Andy Melville it is who's going to uh, going to take it. And as we enter and approach the last five minutes. Richard Ord. Nice control there. Out to Kubitsky. Kubitsky goes for the long one. Uh, what can Craig Russell do? He's on fire this afternoon. Patrick Mann so far, another two chances missed. For Michael Gray, and such a lot of youth in this team as well. As Kubitsky to Melville. Sandlin quite sensibly keeping the ball now. All right, they're five up, five give a go. Draw Millwall out and look to get one. That, that won't wash with the referee, Uwe Fuchs, fouling Richard Ord. And uh, the German from Kaiserslautern retreats as Richard Orr takes the free kick. 
No danger. It's a nasty crack there for Martin Smith. A few, uh, few boots flying in a fairly harmless way, but he uh, took a bit of a stunner on the head. And uh, whether he's uh, whether he's ready to receive Martin Scott's throw, I don't know. Dogged covering by Sunderland there, and Steve Fagnews, the judge to be too dogged, and it's going to be a, a free kick to Millwall. Uh, Sunderland leading 5-0. Prepare to go ahead of Millwall at the top of the table. They'll be three goals better off as far as goals scored go. They'll be three points better off, and they've got two games in hand. That's over Millwall, and they've got a game in hand over Leicester and Norwich as well, and Grimsby in the, the chasing pack. So Sunderland are going to be up there to be shot at starting next week against Reading and Derby County. Lavin plays a long ball forward, more in hope than anything else. Send them football their way out of that. Richard Ord floating it forward. Bill Gray's there to receive. Richard Ord again. This time it's Craig Russell doing it there. Straight across by Martin Gray. This is Michael Gray. The Bitskis can't. Get there. Three minutes, barely three minutes to go. We've not really had any any stoppages. Physios haven't been on, and uh, I've no doubt that referee Eddie Lomas will blow his whistle on the button at the end of the 90 minutes. And that's one man who will be glad to hear that whistle. Casey Keller, a dismal time last Saturday against Watford. At fault, there was at least one what what could go, and uh, he couldn't really be blamed this afternoon. He had no a pretty tatty defence in front of him. Five minutes. That's a good run by Savage, but he ran out of steam. brought down well, I thought he brought it down Steve Agnew quite run for him Doyle with the clearance Slides it back. That's all Sunderland needs to do. A useful practice in holding the ball, keeping their shape, keeping their lead intact. Good challenge. Good challenge there by Martin Gray. Another Martin, Martin Scott now. Going for the long one. Too long, nobody there. No real pace on that. Uwe Fuchs.
It's a nice little ball by Michael Gray there through to Martin Gray. And that's Martin Smith. Could be useful. Martin Gray lets it run to Steve Agnew. And uh, Kubitsky now. Sunderland. Sticking the passes together very nicely. Gray Russell. Michael Gray. Last minute into injury time, I make it in fact. Not that there's been much of that. Kubitsky. Craig Russell looking for goal number four. May get it. Shoots. Oh, that's a crack out. He's got it. Six on the whistle. On the death, Craig Russell makes it four. That's John Goodman got the last Sunderland hat trick against Millwall in 1992 when Sunderland won 6 2. Well, they're winning 6 0, and Craig Russell has rattled in four of them. So there'll be a few people sitting up and taking notice there. Always a useful, promising prospect, suffered by playing in teams lacking confidence and success, and now Craig Russell has come good. Final whistle, and Sunderland convincing winners clear top of the league by three points, two games in hand, four goals for Craig Russell, a penalty goal for Martin Scott, a goal for Phil Gray, his seventh of the season. That puts Phil Gray on seven, Craig Russell on six. A full house at Roker Park, and six goals from their heroes. Sunderland lead the Ensley League Division One tonight. Deservedly so, a great afternoon, a fine performance from Sunderland. It's Sunderland 6, Millwall 0. Nil. Peter, 6 nil, a complete performance, taking you clear at the top of the league. Yeah, it's um, always nice to have a clean sheet, but uh, some of the attack and play uh, this afternoon was first class. I'm delighted. Uh, to be fair, we've been threatening to do this uh, to somebody, and uh, it's unfortunate for Millwall that it was them. And of course, it didn't seem to be a weak link in the team. Craig, four goals. Yeah, the, um, I just thought. It, I mean, you mentioned a complete performance. We just went out there and uh, we were solid at the back, and um, we got down the sides, down the wings, crossed quality into the box, and then finished it, which is uh, delightful from my point of view and, and for the players as well. And the ironic thing was, it could have been more. <laughs> uh, well. That's football, it could have been. We created an awful lot of chances today, and uh, all credit to the players, they were first class. And Phil Gray, of course, after the problems of the last fortnight, <coughs> goal for him? Well, we haven't had any problems, he just wanted a uh, transfer, and that, that happens in football, but uh, I thought he, he was he typified us today, he was tremendous. Um, if he had to pick one, I think uh, Richard Ord was outstanding. Skipper as well, and of course Martin Gray back in the reckoning. Yeah, I mean, uh, since I've, I've been at the club, um, I've used uh, all my all my squad of players, and everyone who comes in and does a job, uh, well, everyone who comes in does a great job for me. Same happened again today. But the whole team was bubbling with confidence, wasn't it? Yeah, um, we uh, well, we want to get the ball uh, down and play, and like uh, like I said before, we've been threatening to do this uh, for some time now, and it just come right today. Craig, four goals. Which was your favourite? Um, the first one, I would say so. Um, great ball through. Um, ran onto it. There's a friend I was breathing down my neck, and I've managed to get a good strike on it in the bottom corner. A nice start. And then, of course, two headers. That's unusual for Craig Russell. Yeah, very unusual. Um, if, I think if I'd have said to somebody I'd score with two headers, I would have laughed us, laughed us off the field, you know. But I've managed it, and uh, hopefully, there's more to come. But you felt the whole team was right for it today, didn't you, really? Oh, yeah, the lads were right up for it. Uh, I have to thank Tippy, who has played really well alongside us, you know, in the whole, whole of the side. Magnificent. And yet, of course, let's face it, early this afternoon, you didn't really know whether you were playing or not. True enough. Um, playing the reserves midweek, managed to get a goal in, which did me uh, my chances no harm, you know. So, in the gap I stuck us in, what more can I say, really? Is this the first time you scored four goals? Um, I have done in the past in like junior sides, but it's the first time I've uh, managed it in the um, football league. And Michael Gray. Oh my goodness me! Nearly an opening first blood to Phil Gray there. Nice in swinging corner there from Michael Gray and his namesake Phil. Was, uh, 
been at odds with the management times has run well here look into the six yard area gets it well and perhaps might have just got over it and nodded it down as it was he topped it and it went just over the bar flicked out nicely by Craig Russell up comes Kabitsky now 90th game for Sunderland he hasn't scored yet drills it in and Kelly go, Keller goes down saves well but another good effort by Kubitsky has been encouraged by Peter Reed to get forward, get into shooting positions and have a go. He did that against Crystal Palace. It's a fine surging run look. Through, gets the ball again on his left foot, not perhaps his strongest foot, but it was a good crisp shot all along the ground. And this is going to be Martin Gray or is it going to be Michael Gray who takes, takes the throw? It's going to be Michael. Kubitsky. This could be interesting. Oh, now, yes, penalty, no doubt about it at all. Phil Gray turned very quickly on Anton Rogan. His legs went, and there seemed to be little doubt at all that that collision. Watch it now. There we are, straight down. There seemed to be little doubt there that the tackle by one Northern Ireland international on another was going to bring about a penalty kick. So this could be first blood to Sunderland after some 13 minutes. And it's got to be Martin Scott, scorer of two penalties already. Nice one. Sunderland, a goal up, no problem, says Martin Scott. One finger in the air, but in fact, that's his third penalty success of the season. It's his fourth goal. The other one came from a free kick against Watford. Very cool. Casey Keller dived completely the wrong way. Sunderland getting players right behind the ball. Tremendous willingness to work hard. Doyle. Thatcher. Now. Millwall trying to create something. Just coming into it now. Not a bad cross. Oh, my goodness me. That was moments of anxiety in the Sunderland defence. It was skipper Richard Ord who got there in the end and sliced it over the bar. But really, Uwe Fuchs nearly got away. Watch him. Onto the far side of the goal, just wide of the far post. And he manages to flick it back. And uh, it looked really as if Alec Chamberlain had it covered. But uh, Richard Ord was there just in time anyway, and just in case to whip it over the bar. Oh, that's a wretched one. Wretched one from Doyle. Sunderland dispatched that fairly quickly, but Millwall having a, a useful little spell just at the moment. Lovely ball from Agnew now. Martin Smith. Has he got support, though? Yes, great run through the middle there, in fact. Great run there by Craig Russell. Oh, that's a great goal! Craig Russell, superb run there. Martin Smith just held up his run, delayed things till Craig Russell overtook him, releasing it just the right time. And Craig Russell timed his left foot shot so beautifully, just inside that upright. Here it comes again. Martin Smith brings it down beautifully on his left foot while still keeping moving. Look at Craig Russell going through the middle like a tank, just inside the area. Cracks it wide of Casey Keller. What a superbly orchestrated goal. So we've been playing for half an hour. Martin Scott, the scorer of the first goal from the penalty spot. And now Craig Russell makes it 2-0. And Sunderland can already see that league table with themselves sitting three points ahead of Millwall and two games in hand. And, uh, well, well done, Craig Russell. Player of great promise here at Sunderland. He's perhaps hasn't moved as quickly as some people felt he would in terms of development but uh, he is young and uh, a lot was expected of him in the days when the team was struggling and uh, he's uh, certainly took his goal very well and that's a lovely ball there across to Phil Gray now what can Phil Gray do can he get a shot delayed his shot and he pulled it across the goal this is Savage for Millwall to Alex Ray had a disappointing afternoon that ball just about sums it up Richard Ord, skipper for the day. Oh, this is promising, Craig Russell. And, oh, well, he might have done better. He was falling away from it at the time. It was a lovely weighted chip in. Here, here it comes from the skipper. Right across. Craig, Phil Gray, good header on. Craig Russell, but he was leaning away from it. Couldn't quite direct it down. Direct operations as Sunderland move forward, as they've done for most of this game. Martin Scott. Now, nice Phil Gray to Martin Smith. Now, closed down, but it's uh, Scott for the That's a great goal. 
Martin Scott got the header in, over it came, and Phil Gray, lurking on the six-yard area, powered his header past Casey Keller. The Millwall defence absolutely nowhere, as it was five minutes ago. No doubt about it. Martin Scott across, Phil Gray leaps there, completely gets between uh, Ben Thatcher and Stevens, powers the ball into the back of the net. Beautiful goal. So Phil Gray makes it 3-0 to Sunderland in the 52nd minute, with Craig Russell getting number two halfway through the first half, and Martin Scott opening the scoring from the penalty spot. It's Sunderland 3, Millwall 0. All at sixes and sevens. A bad day for them. They're in a bad run. They've just got two points out of five games. They've lost the last three games. And uh, things not too happy at all. Indeed, last season, they've, they flattered to deceive. They played well early in the season. Then they faded and ended up finishing 12th. Phil Gray. Can Martin Smith get on the end of that? He does indeed. Always a chance for... It's there! What a great goal from Craig Russell. Phil Gray started it on to Martin Smith. Overcame the cross. Millwall defence absolutely nowhere. And there was Craig Russell flinging himself in to nod in number four. 4-0 four to Sunderland after 58 minutes. Look at no Millwall defence at all. Now at the moment, they're beating Millwall 4-0. And the number of goals they've conceded in that time has been pretty minimal. Only 15 all season. Nice run here. Threaded through here for Craig Russell. Is this the hat-trick? Bounces free there to Michael Gray, but just intercepted in the nick of time. And another substitution for Millwall. Brings on Scott Taylor as uh, Phil Gray. Pulling it back there. That's it. And that's Craig Russell's hat-trick. Phil Gray, the provider again, 17 minutes to go. So the 73rd minute, it's Sunderland 5, Millwall 0, and Craig Russell, the hat-trick hero of Roker Park and Wearside. Watch this. Gray turns, loses his marker. Stevens again, hooks it across, and Craig Russell, despite the attention of two Millwall defenders, rose and nodded it in so easily. 5-0, Craig Russell 3 Phil Gray 1 and Martin Scott. 2 0 at half time, 5 0 now, and time for still more. Sunderland go nap, 5 0 over the team this morning at the top of the league. Martin Gray, nice to see Martin come back and uh, share in the celebrations today. He's been in the, in the shadows a little bit here at Roker Park, and of course, he's been now to Fulham on loan when he uh, had the strange experience of being sent off with mistaken identity. Uh, Craig Russell out there to Michael Gray. The crowd cheering every pass, as well they might. Nice sinewy move here. Not a bad effort. Crazy Keller <coughs> moved a little slowly, I thought, there. But all the Sunderland players, I think, this afternoon will feel that they've contributed. They've had a good game. Oh, that's a beautiful skill. Phil Gray got space here. Can he cross it? Yes, he can. And it's Craig Russell. Is this number four? No, how did he miss it? My good. <laughs> well. It's a nice little ball by Michael Gray there through to Martin Gray. And that's Martin Smith. Could be useful. Martin Gray lets it run to Steve Agnew. And uh, Kubitsky now. Sunderland. Sticking the passes together very nicely. Craig Russell, Michael Gray. Last minute into injury time, I make it, in fact. Not that there's been much of that. Kubitsky. Craig Russell, looking for goal number four. May get it. Shoots. Oh, that's a cracker. He's got it. Six on the whistle. On the death, Craig Russell makes it four. That's Don Goodman got the last Sunderland hat-trick against Millwall in 1992, when Sunderland won 6-2. Well, they're winning 6-0, and Craig Russell has rattled in four of them.